Hello, Hello, we're Must Charmly. Um, This episode is a bit of a discussion about competition and comparison as a social dynamic and how it pertains to art and creative people. Please leave comments below because we would really love to hear what you have to say. And please subscribe because it really helps us out. If you can get through all of this, we just want to let you know that we have a lot of different aspects to share. So just hold on and you're going to get something out of this, we hope. So, okay. Art as content. Social media has changed the way people do and conceive art. It's definitely changed how everyone thinks about producing their art, creating their art, and sharing their art. And their art happens to be a part of them, right? Yeah. So, yeah. It's very personal. Like art, Art's very personal. So It's a piece of us. Yeah. And, and it's kind of this, for me, this feels like a very vulnerable topic. That's, well, yeah. Um, so... Mm-hmm. The way this is real. Yeah, it is. Mm-hmm. It's real. And art's very personal to, to artists and pretty much everyone. Everyone. <laughs> Good stuff. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So um, the way people have to post to social media, you know, in order to get people to look at their art and get an audience, it's just uh, posting so consistently and in such vast amounts that mm-hmm. it becomes inundating or, you know, because the algorithms are art becomes a competition of algorithms kind of or just and that can be really you know it's crunch culture yeah <laughs> it's pretty serious and that's what it right isn't that what it's called now it's pretty serious uh, it's it's just this need to sort of constantly produce something at yes. such a high level yeah all the, all the all time all the time that it's such a difficult environment to just sort of comfortably and 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 you know uh, genuinely produce really wonderful pieces of art yeah. or anything you want to create music whatever i mean pressure is always going to be a part of the world of creating something especially when you're making a living off of it but there's a lot to it yeah there's like an you know? a, there's an added pressure mm-hmm. that you're you're kind of fighting mm-hmm. an algorithm in a weird way it's it's mm-hmm. like uh, people it be- become the algorithm. Yeah, it becomes know? it becomes basing your art on what the alg- algorithm deems appropriate to like or and, popular. Yeah, and and continue making. Mm-hmm. So then style suffers for that for the algorithm, mm-hmm. and eventually people lose that uniqueness and that freedom of experimentation, and the art begins to look the same. It does completely the same. So people start copying things simply because it sells, but that doesn't necessarily make it right and it's kind of a a thing so is that part of why you know a unique a uniqueness and a speciality in art isn't seen as much online on social media Mm -hmm. because of the algorithm battle that you're you're kind of fighting like everyone's just kind of fights oh it's i think it's a yes so yeah like it's kind of talking Mm -hmm. about like in a way there's this homogenization in art and it's happened just because of social media. Yeah. It's because the social media kind of feeds that beast in us. Yeah. I mean, we are human animals that always need to succeed in something. And this literally feeds that side of it where uh, people need either someone to, you know, fight against or something to be afraid of, you know, friend or foe. Um, it's the whole flight or fight scenario that exists within us. It's the lizard brain, basically, that's making a lot of people, everyone ultimately, has this innate need to succeed, to win, to survive, ultimately. And that's what those demographics are. You know, I mean, sorry, not demographic. Uh, the algorithm is feeding. Yeah. You don't think that that the way algorithms are created doesn't actually know that people want more friends, <laughs> more likes, more anything because that actually makes us feel better, we more successful. Oh yeah, those algorithms know exactly what, you know, people want and need. It sort of plays on our survival of that, No, that's of what it's doing. Surviving of of, you know, getting an audience and uh, mm-hmm. uh, 
being seen. Being yeah, and being seen. Being recognized. Being, yeah. You know? Because ultimately there's always going to be people who either had something in their world, you know, when they were younger or, or whatever age, you know, may have happened where people obviously will discount your art. Oh, that's a great hobby. How oh. many times you've heard that? Yeah. You know, oh, you know, or you you have art that you're kind of like you don't want people to think you're kind of, you know, you got some darkness. But it's not really darkness. You're, I mean, come on. You're just drawn like stuff. You know, look at Geiger, right? Yeah. Amazing, beautiful art. The dude totally leaned into, well, you dirty know. Dirty bathroom drains. Dirty bathroom. <laughs> like, he's like, that's what he, what are you drawing, Geiger? Oh, uh, dirty bathrooms. Okay, awesome. Right? I have a speciality. He's incredible, the stuff he's drawn. <laughs> yes, some of this stuff is totally, you know, but fallacy because of that, written. True. But who cares? It's like, wow, that's art. That's awesome. Because of that, like, uniqueness, mm-hmm. doesn't that kind of, it, it's grown his art and it's grown his vision. Well, it's grown and, the appreciation of people. Yeah. Because he's stayed true to his vision. Yeah, and that's not kind of, stayed true to the algorithm. Yeah, so the it's kind of like exist. does that <laughs> that competition within that fighting an algorithm mm-hmm. has kind of lost that vision. Yeah. Yeah. It, it's it's where is that uniqueness that sort of like I'm following what I initially wanted to do and be as an artist. I believe that it's changing. Social media has totally changed the way people even think about stuff, you know, as an artist, as a creator. Um, it's very, very unique. It totally is, is, ultimately, it's trying to mold so many different aspects of society. And it's doing a great job of it. You know, it really is. It's, it's, it's doing what it's designed to do. You're looking at, so, by the way, just to talk about how social media has changed, you know, what's going on with artists and people. How many social media platforms are decaying as we speak? You know, they are falling apart. Instagram, not as popular as it once was. You know, you've got Twitter, you've got so many different things. Yeah, there's so many, right? Things are changing. Yeah, just things are changing. For people themselves, you know. And it's really sort of like it's not what it once was. So where do you go? And you always have to sort of move where the currents are taking you in some aspects of society. And, you know, because that's sort of like where you want to be seen. And that's understandable. And that's just natural, too. Like, it's yeah. it's expected that these mm-hmm. these kind of platforms are going to come and go, just like they everything will. else in the world. Right. You know? They always will. And they all, they'll have to change their names so that they sort of, no, oh, no we're brand new. Yeah. <laughs> no, you're not. Chill out. So just wanted to talk about that where we are are individuals we are creators that actually ultimately are the fuel for these algorithms for these giant corporations and we have the power to change the way things are done we are the reason why it exists and we have the ability to change the way things are i believe that a lot of times in social media people really want to find someone something you know a connection right well you want to build a community right so that's what's missing in a lot of this is that you're dealing with a lot of superficial aspects of connection and creation and that um so it's kind of like we really need to start thinking about focusing inward as artists focusing on creating that community a real community a, authenticity a, a, there that's we go. that's mm-hmm. authenticity and and yeah. that's kind of hard because it leads to you know a lot well, of it's vulnerability. vulnerability is what we're fighting but yeah. ultimately that that's what you're going to always have to fight yeah. you know and that's fine you know what i mean that's not a, a not a problem right you know so you know if, if you can be vulnerable and be compassionate that's what the other side of it needs to be if you're sharing something that makes you know, you're vulnerable. You need to, another individual to deal with it sensitively, compassionately. And that's something that we all have the capacity to do. And that is the antithesis or the opposite of social superficialism. You yeah. Know? And that's really what we're trying to say. Creating something of depth, you know. Yes. It's important. So it's really, really important. And, and engaging, connecting. These are all really, really important things to take, you know, into account when you want to create something of, of meaning, you know. Um, and why we're talking about how competition actually kills all of this, that's the whole point, is yeah. that <laughs> competition literally creates BS, you know. When you have people who have this drive to be first, 
Yeah, this they is will that, step over you. Yeah, that they will knock you side. down. They will, you know, I need that ten dollar microwave, so I'm gonna just jump on you over you just to get that ten dollar microwave. <laughs> like it's that microwave's only gonna probably last another four, what? How many? I'm gonna be able to, you know, heat my my hot pop hot pocket four <laughs> times, and it's gonna be dead, right? But that's okay. Nice, thanks. That's the point. What competition does to people is the same thing algorithms do, where there is something inside of us that we need to be first. We need to win. And that's the problem. Because what it does to people, it brings the worst out in people. Yeah. It absolutely does. You know, that's where art becomes content, right? Yeah. You're you're not... You're not making art that is something of deep meaning for you. It's almost like you don't even have the time to think sometimes because you need to like, oh, I'm, I'm making it. I'm, I'm the machine. I'm making machine art here. <laughs> and that's what happens. And you're like, I'm going to get ahead. I'm going to do I'm going to do it all. Right. You know, you're like four Red Bulls in and you're just I'm going to be number one. I'm telling you, I'm going to be number one. I'm going to be number one. <laughs> it's like, no, stop being number one. Be the best you can be. You know, a lot of people say I'm gonna, I'm I'm. You know, it's healthy to, to, you know, be competitive with other people. Um, no, it's not at all. Um, a lot of people will say it's unhealthy to compare yourself to other people. Of course, it's unhealthy too. But to compare yourself with other people and to be competitive with other people, uh, the differentiation is honestly semantics in a social environment. Because no matter what you do, if you are comparing yourself to another artist, another individual, it's like, okay, uh, am I better than they are? Well, obviously, that is the mindset of competition, and that's really what we're talking about. People need to be happy for other people's success. It would be nice. It Wouldn't would be it? nice to a to, genuine happiness. Yeah, uh, to, to genuinely be mm -hmm. to sh genuinely show compassion and kindness yeah. to others, as opposed to um, judgment and just objectivity you know yeah that's there's, what's there's happening a to people. lot of you know a lot of that mm -hmm. just i, I need can't to be even, first yeah like you it, know? it's, horrible it's kind of happens. funny like you you could see it in things day to day maybe uh maybe other people see it too like on the road or just in life there's just when you're in life you could just see a lot there's a lot of people who have that really negative competitive mindset that can be really hurt, that hurtful. And, and it's funny because I'll think of like an anime with this kind of stuff because mm, yeah. I kind of had a, a differentiating opinion that, you know, that there's healthy competition. Mm -hmm. And, and then like, I kind like, of, uh, oh like, gosh, what, like what, I, compa I, ca anime? I, compa I, I compared it with, um, like, for example, like Dragon Ball, mm -hmm. the Dragon Ball Z. Yeah. Where I, I kind of felt like, it, or or any real anime that you know people Go kind Super of Saiyan? yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know or it's mm -hmm. it's kind of like where they f fight you know an external force and they themselves sort mm -hmm. of transform themselves to to improve and get better mm -hmm. and you don't see other characters like pooping in their protein powder <laughs> yeah to get ahead to get right? ahead yeah, totally like not. you know you know but yeah, that's not Coco. <laughs> it's it's mm -hmm. so so there was that kind of thing mm -hmm. where they but then i kind of looked it's at that it whole, differently the, it's their rivals yeah they're, they're not I love that, it's a healthy rival that yeah like they, how it's sort of being sold yeah like i <laughs> i and i i i loved that where mm -hmm. it, it was this kind of it seemed like really positive like yeah. like for example like demon slayer where mm -hmm. um the main character had his two other friends and they really instead of you know saying hey you guys you know you suck you suck and mm -hmm. you know get out of my way yeah get out of my way he kind of brought them up mm -hmm. to yeah. his own um well he brought them to the to a level where it was kind of like they're he's like hey they're equal you can be the best you can yeah be. you might not do things the way i can do yeah. it because we're all different but you know, we can help each other to actually be the best we can be in this incredibly horrible circumstance. Yeah. You know, so that's that's that's, anime. that's the yeah. kind of anime yeah. thing that like mm -hmm. I, I've always felt was like a healthy competition of yeah. like rivals and that that mm -hmm. kind of thing that 
they had kind of an admiration too for each yeah. other. Like mm-hmm. other people have an admiration. Uh, and I, I really like that too, where it was yeah. like, wow, you are so cool. I want to be like you. I want to kick butt like you. Like mm-hmm. they acknowledge that they do something great and then they'll kind of just better themselves, want to better themselves. And the, that other person who's ahead of them, you know, brings a hand down and is like, hey, I'll help you do that. Yeah. You know, come on up. Let's high five. Mm. Right? And then, you yeah. know, go for it. Come exactly. on up. Let's do it. And, and, and it was that aspect of, of just people having the same goal and and not belittling each other mm-hmm. but just sort of like lifting bettering each, bettering other. each other and lifting each other up and not caring about each other yeah showing compassion to yeah, one another exactly so <laughs> not judging each other yeah mm-hmm. that's the most important aspect to achieve yeah that's where real growth happens it's it's inside you you give it to other people and that's absolutely admirable to do absolutely admirable so but that's the opposite of competition if you think about it yeah you know the definition of competition does not yeah and the put de- that into the we, we looked up the definition you know? of so, competition yeah. Yeah. for this yeah it's not about helping people and, and <laughs> it wasn't like that no. for no. the definition so look so. it up yourself you'll actually kind of like might see something new so and it kind of makes you think in a in that social dynamic way mm-hmm. so something different yeah so yeah so we hope you got something out of that. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> um, you know, it's interesting, different types of, you know, competition that exists. You know, you have to think about this. Um, competing intrinsically um, is something that... Like is, focusing is, inward. Yeah. Like it's how a, it's in that sort of like anime that kind thing, of thing. Yeah, compete with yourself kind of a thing. Yeah. That's interesting aspects, you know, if you want, you want to talk about that because... Um, it's 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 sort of like a competition with what is essential or a natural way a harmony between you know you as a creator of something if we're talking you know when it you know according to art you know so it's kind of like okay i'm i'm going to be competitive with myself but i believe that that terminology shouldn't be used because it's easy to misconstrue what it's truly meaning or what 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 is trying to portray it in its in its root in its heart yeah to, you to need have to be, goals for yeah, yourself but to, aren't you bettering yourself you're just, yeah you're it's not, being com- it's com- not competitive, competitive with yourself it, yeah it's you're just bettering it's just yourself, bettering yourself. Mm-hmm. that that's a better term yeah you know competition is in is definitely the lack of compassion in many aspects of growth if you think about it so that's an interesting thing. I like so. how, you know, because this is something we, we both have been talking about a lot. For so, a while, yeah. Yeah, so we kind of mm-hmm. wanted to share a little bit. So Yeah. Um, yeah. Um, uh, just for a perfect example of what competition will actually do to, to certain things in, 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 in that out, negative in, way. In a negative way, in a very negative way. Uh, strangely enough, this was so strange, we were actually talking about this and, and going to actually you know, record talking about you know, how competition is, can really be painful, you know, and, and can really do harm to so many people. Yeah, it, it has sad. negative effects for, uh, you know, it, it has negative effects for the people who are competitive mm-hmm. and for uh, yeah. and for the people around them. Yeah. You know, you know? pooping in the protein powder oh, it's much, has effects. I mean, you know, you, 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 I mean, I, there are circumstances <laughs> where everyone. like you'll be, you'll, you'll play a sport, you'll do so many different things and you'll finally get good at this sport. You know, oh, let's play. And you play someone who's sort of always, you know, kicked your butt at it, but then you actually beat them and, and they'll give up playing they'll, They all. won't ever play with you again. Yeah. It's like. What was that all about? What was that all about, huh? Like, so I, what? That we doesn't... can't play the game anymore? Because it's not about... It's not about having it's fun. It's not about playing the game together. It, it was only that... about you kicking my butt. Yeah. And that kind of... <laughs> wow. It... So that's... That's not fun. No. That's and not... That kind of makes you no think... There's no camaraderie there. No. There's no community there. There's no interaction there that has any, you know, merit. That's... It's sad. It's sad for the person who who you're playing with. That's exactly. And it. it's sad for what drove you, them to be that way. Yeah, and then what's you're, their motivation? I agree, and and you're you're left there alone after playing. Like oh, I really wanted to play and have fun, and you're just sort of left there and just kind of like, what, what do I? What? Yeah, that was. What do I do now? Like I just thought we were gonna, you know, yeah, have right. fun. I guess and I'll that, just go back inside and watch Star Trek. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> That's true. Like right? Thanks. 
Love it. Oh. You know what I mean? Yeah. Love Star Trek. I've had course, that, that same thing, too. Yeah. So I did want to bring up one topic yes, that I thought was very relevant to this topic. Yeah. This because I don't side. think this is the negative side of competition and what it can do to people. And it's funny because it was almost so poignant because I was, you know, listening to NPR and I was like, wow, this is fascinating how it's completely what we're talking about and preparing for this video, talking about competition and what it can do in negative ways for people. Um, specifically, uh, this was interesting because it act actually had to do with uh, scientific uh, lab results being falsified and manipulated. Um, it was fascinating. Um, Stanford University president uh, in this specific case, talking about scientific proofs and publishing, um, whatever, um, uh, a Stanford University president is going to resign because of research papers he contributed to uh, where the research was manipulated. Now, it was an interesting topic because um, there is the idea was that the rush to publish is so important to so many people working in the scientific field that a lot of papers that are being actually published are actually retracted. Like there's over like 500 or there's hundreds of findings that are retracted yearly. And the reason being is, is that if you are published, it is important. And what's sad is even if you publish scientific findings and if they're false, it's kind of more important than you published than for those findings to be correct. And I think that's really ties into the fact that, you know, a, what was being spoken about was that the problem was the system. Because it is not uncommon when it comes to research data. You know, a lot of lab results are retracted. Um, experts believe it is the system that needs to be monitored a lot more, you know, specifically like there really needs to be a lot more people double checking their work and you'd assume it would be i mean we're dealing with scientific findings that you know science is built upon more science it's kind of like wow everything is built upon itself and you're like you've got some leading scientists in this world who have manipulated data so that they can get tenure yeah, so that they can get cloud. a better job so that they can be important like that's what I think is fascinating, just as a side note. So it was really interesting. Um, so it was really, it was really interesting. And the reason why a lot of people said that this even exists is that the system is kind of a flawed system where, you know, people are publishing, findings are accepted, grants are given, you know, so on and so forth. People are getting jobs. It's more important to publish and it's more important to be number one. And I think that when they talk about the system in that case, it's there is great similarities between the algorithms that people are publishing on social media and people trying to publish works of, you know, scientific merit. And I think that it's not just the art world that can actually really be hurt by needing to be first so badly that, you know, you can potentially, you know, falsify things things aren't real that's all this false reality that's being created and it's really it, it was just a fascinating concept that it was such a poignant moment where we're talking about this another poignant moment that yes. i thought was okay, fascinating yes. was that presently in this time if you hear this video um lk99 if anybody knows if they're all up on what's going on certain scientific stuff lk99 uh is a new element that is being found to be a superconductive element um and there are so many skeptics out there because this lk99 is supp supposedly um a uh, room temperature superconductor meaning that it doesn't need liquid nitrogen it doesn't need specific you know uh specific pressures to actually be conductive um Superconductors have many different traits uh, and characteristics. Um, they do very different things. So it's sort of like saying car, this car goes fast, but what kind of engine's in it? Does it have a carburetor, to, you know, whatever. Is it electric? Where's the battery system? Anyways, so when you say superconductor, it's almost a generic form of label, you know, but the superconductors they're talking about and the, qual and the um, specificity of this superconductor is that it is a lossless conductive material which means that a material like this would change all electronics to the point where you'd be able to have batteries that will last 
years, you will have microelectronics will change. It would change everything. Solar panels would be in space. We'll be able so to bring... Anyway, the... sorry. I'll go on and on. <laughs> sorry about that. But the point is, is that there are so many people who are skeptical of these findings because just in 2020, the University of Rochester, you know, there were uh, retracted findings that they found a similar exact same thing. Basically, a room temperature superconductor that has lossless, you know, superconductivity. Um, and all of these things can go back to the 90s where this need to be first is so important. This need to succeed is so important that people will want to, will see what they want to see. Yeah. I, They'll find what they want to find. That is, it doesn't mean that it's true. It's real. It, and it's like, hey, you know, I know that it's sort of a random thing to bring up, but I think it's kind of interesting that competition is so thick and rich in <laughs> the scientific world even not just the art world not just music not just movies and film you know any form of creativity any aspect that some individual is creating something from nothing that there is such this drive this need to be first because there is just this incredibly saturated environment they're working in that it is just it's more important to be first than it is to be actually just or or correct. Yeah, I, I think and I one think of those, that's what I'm talking about. Those things too that you mentioned, and it's kind of it's it's part of it, but it kind of this this kind of little topic bit is kind of like um. It kind of discusses how you you kind of get lo uh, lost in what is right and wrong without even mm -hmm. uh, kind of recognizing that something's a, l a little twisted yeah. or very twisted, mm -hmm. and it's out there and it's it could be something very subtle. And this is something we were discussing before, and uh, the topic was like uh, Facebook uh, friend count. Oh man, and that blew me away. How it was so important? It people. was so important for some people to have a certain number of friends and and uh you know my partner and I we're we're very like you know we're very quiet people I mean we yeah, don't we're we're introverted we're, we're even lucky that we even met each other we <laughs> <laughs> like badgers in the wild well like, no like no they're they're they're, they're worse than we are honestly <laughs> they don't even know how they mate <laughs> badgers it's, badgers it's sorry it's like it's one of those things where uh, it's hard, hard for me to describe where mm -hmm. it's something so subtle that you don't even recognize it and it becomes it's false importance isn't yeah it? it's, it's false impo importance and, it, and it's it's and, then, and you just realize how how weird is that to have a number count for friends like who's counting their friends yeah like if you step out of that yeah, like, sort of mindset it's we're like, about wow. quality like we'd rather have yeah. like one or mm -hmm. two people yeah. You know, that, you know, we can count so on. Sit and play D&D &D with, right? Yeah, oh my Here gosh. We go, right? Totally. Yeah. And that's... Instead of 400,000 friends. Yeah. I'd rather have four. You know, yeah, <laughs> just, just random acquaintances like that. It's, it's, yeah. it's very, it's very different. And it's, it's something, it's just an odd thing to, to sort of recognize. So maybe like it, on being on social media and kind of realizing, well, like, well, does it really matter to have, mm -hmm. you know, over you know, 50 to a hundred to, you know, f hundreds of thousands of friends. It's, yeah. it, that's a kind of an odd thing. And it's just like, what else is there in social media that maybe we're missing that we don't even know is kind of mm -hmm. twisted like that, that kind know. of yeah. twists our perspective and then twists yeah. our behaviors. Yeah. And we have the power to do it. We have, we the, have power the power to change, to change that. We have the power to actually make something different than what it really is. Yeah. So, yeah. To, to notice it, to acknowledge it. Mm hmm and to also just be more authentic and to be do our real you yeah to to do our best to to brave out there and be our vulnerable vulnerable selves and that's more important yeah. than four thousand likes it is so, just as a person it really is it is so yeah right yes <laughs> so we're gonna stop now <laughs> <laughs> yeah we went we went on a bit we went off a little so also just just a random little thing too we're drawing a an an elf yeah. picture well, boulders because, gate three because we're excited <laughs> about boulders gate three coming out because mm -hmm. we really want to play 
mm-hmm. learn to play D and D and just and really have fun. And yeah. this game, it looks really cool. And so, fun. so cool. <laughs> I really want to be a high elf right now. <laughs> 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 So I'm a barbarian. Yeah. <laughs> it's okay. Yeah. <laughs> All right, Moss Charlie, Charlie out. out. <laughs> okay. Bye. Thank you, everybody. Like and subscribe. Okay. <laughs> Thank you.